Today we're going to look at the first of several short presentations on how to develop an excellent strategy. And this is a summary and interpretation of the material that is in part two of the Magretta book. And you should be able to apply these principles to each of the six different projects that you'll be working on during this short summer class. So let's look at an overview of the five tests of an excellent strategy. They are to have a unique value proposition, to have a different tailored value chain, to have a clear trade -off, set of trade-offs choosing what to do and specifically to choose what not to do, have all the activities in the value chain fit together and reinforce one another, and to finally have continuity of the application of those over time so that those principles become part of the DNA of your organization. Now as we go through these slides and this and the following presentations, I may refer to IKEA as a particularly good example of uh, the following five steps. And th this will also apply to Sears and Blockbuster and Netflix. Now the projects on General Mill, or General Electric rather, deal more specifically with the peak performance of that company and its subsequent downfall. Nevertheless, you may be able to discern these five tests in GE's operations and particularly where they got away from what, the, what made them great. So let's look at the concepts behind the unique value proposition. Specifically, we need to determine which customers we're going to serve, which needs of those, custo those customers have, and what relative price they're willing to pay. And this is a moving chessboard because as you answer each of those three questions in turn, it's going to have an impact on each of the other two questions in that three-part triangle. So, for example, examining what customers you will be serving, you need to determine who the end users will be and what kind of channels of distribution you must use to reach them. Knowing who your end users are will allow you to determine what needs you will have or you will be servicing for them. What products will you need? What features will they demand? What kind of services will you associate with that product? Recognize that every product sale has some kind of service component, whether it be delivery or warranty, training, or in today's internet world, some kind of helpline or help procedure that the customer can call upon. Now, defining what the customers we intend to serve and what their needs will help us to determine what the relative price we need to charge. Can we charge a premium? Must the price be equal to what the competitor's prices are? Must you offer or may you choose to offer a discount? And note as, uh, as stated previously, each time you change one of those variables in any one of the questions, it'll have an impact on each of the other two questions. And therefore, this is an iterative process as you do this kind of definition. So let's look at IKEA's value proposition. Their offering is based on good design and good function for their furniture at a low price. Their target customer is a person with a thin wallet, and they have chosen to meet the needs of certain kinds of customers, but not the needs of all furniture buyers. Effective customers with sound strategies recognize that they'll have to leave some potential customers behind. They work very hard to maintain focus on the customer they said that they have identified and they choose not to meet the needs of all furniture buyers in order to serve their selected customers more effectively. Having looked at IKEA's value proposition, let's take a short break and then we'll come back and take a look at the other points of an excellent strategy.